This is the Katsadam, nestled in the beautiful highlands of Lesotho, also known as the Mountain Kingdom, a landlocked country within the borders of South Africa. It's also one of the poorest of the African nations. This extraordinary feat of engineering is part of a venture between South Africa and the Kingdom of Lesotho. It's one of two dams already been built, with many more planned, as well as roads and a hydropower plant. That tower is a supply link taking water into South Africa, providing badly needed income for the Lesotho economy. But in order to build this dam and the transfer tunnels which carry the water, 27,000 people were affected. They were, however, promised at the time that their standard of living would be maintained or improved. Unfortunately, most people who've been affected or displaced are now much worse off, impoverished and isolated. <laughs> This was the village of Chief Khatang. When the dam was impounded, a seismic shift caused a huge crack to appear that began down by the water of the dam, travelling all the way through the village and up to the hill over there. That forced most of the villagers to have to relocate. The water has covered most of our grazing land, and breeding livestock was the source of our income. Before we were affected by the dam, the rivers ran freely and our healers would perform our traditional ceremonies in the river. Many of our medicinal plants grew by the river as well, and these have all been covered by the water now. Thousands and thousands of people have lost their land or part of their land, which has drastically reduced their income, and they are owed compensation for this. Whereas some people have received it, many, many people after more than 10 years have received no compensation whatsoever. These people have rights, but who is there to defend them? If this happened to you or I, we would go and see a lawyer. These people can't afford a lawyer. They can't even afford the bus fare to go and see a lawyer. At the World Summit on Sustainable Development in Johannesburg in 2002, a group of people approached me. They'd come down from the mountains of Lesotho. There were about 40 of them, and they were there to try and get help for the tens of thousands of people who had been appallingly affected by the construction of two enormous dams in the Malotti Mountains. And so Protomos was born. A group of fair-minded lawyers who simply look to give people an even chance. The word Protomos means honouring value. These new houses look beautiful, but the coal and paraffin heaters inside them are not good to us because we have no money to buy the fuel. In our traditional houses, we could make a fire with wood collected from the forest. Chief Katang explained what a terrible effect the dam has had on the village. Not being able to afford heating is a major problem, as the dam has affected the climate, and the winters are now much colder. Their vastly reduced number of livestock are now being left on the mountains in winter, often dying of the cold, as there are no fields to move them down to. The forest that provided wood for cooking and heating is now under the water. Also, the impounding of the dam caused the natural water sources, the springs, the wells, to dry up. And the Lesotho Highland Development Authority promised they'd supply fresh water.
The LHDA promised us that our lives would be beautiful after the dam was built, but we are now much worse off. All we had is now covered by the water, and any compensation that has been paid is not adequate. During the blasting for the dam, huge stones were sent down covering our fields, so now many of the fields that remain can be ploughed. The LHDA have not compensated us for the loss of our land to grow our food. There were many crossing points over the river that ran through here before they built the dam, which have all gone now. The LHDA promised to build bridges, which they never did, and now we are on our own. We are isolated. The sanitation in the village is very bad. The latrines were built in a very rush-rush kind of way. They are now filled up and are flooding the whole area, causing sickness. Because we now have so little livestock, we have no more to sell and no means of getting cash. Our livelihood has been drastically changed. We are farmers who depend on breeding livestock and growing crops, and this way of life has been destroyed now. People who do not have access to the law and lawyers get ripped off. Like here, they're moved from their homes to make way for a big government scheme which may benefit the economy, but at a terrible price for many. Their means of existence, their traditions, their way of life are all being lost. The result is exploitation, poverty and hopelessness. There are many villages unaffected by the dam, although there are five more dams being planned. All the affected communities were specifically promised by the Lesotho Highland Development Authority that their livelihoods, living standards and conditions would be restored as closely as possible, such that they are better off than before project implementation. We're setting up a legal engine room in Maseru where we are going to examine the legal issues and, if necessary, take them to the High Court so that a judge can make a fair determination. We are going to train young lawyers on these cases so that in the future they'll be able to take over the work for themselves. And we're going to workshop each case uh, within the community where the issue arises, so that the community itself takes ownership of its own case. This is the village of Hansi. The sound that you can hear, which the villagers have to put up with every day, is of the quarry that was established right next door to the village to get material for the construction of a road to Mahali Dam. The Lesotho Highland Development Authority painted numbers on all the houses within 500 metres of the quarry, anticipating the damage that would be caused from the blasting. In fact, over 170 houses were seriously damaged, and yet the LHDA randomly chose only 18 houses to rebuild. This is house number 76. The continual blasting has caused the entire front of the house to lean forward. The window doesn't even fit into the window frame anymore, and there are huge cracks inside the house. Basically, this house is on the verge of collapse, but unfortunately, there are still people living in it. This is house number 72. The family Mahabi Mahabi live here. One day, a huge boulder the size of a football crashed through their roof, landing in their living room. 
Although the people in the village had been told that they might be damaged to their buildings within a 500 meter radius, nobody had warned them that there would also be rocks raining down on the village from the blasting. It's a miracle that nobody's actually been killed. Despite many requests and pleas from the villagers, even going so far as to write a letter to the Prime Minister, the situation in the village has become so intolerable that they decided to take their case to the High Court. It was immediately dismissed on a technicality and then again on appeal. The merits of this case have never been heard in a court of law. Protomos intends to reopen this case and see that justice is served. <laughs> Protomos exists to give people like this a chance to be heard in law, to give them a voice so that they can express their grievance and misery in public with proper support. The law can and should be used to challenge a culture of greed and corruption, obliging governments, financial institutions and corporations to behave honourably, which often means just living up to promises they've already made. Displacement is not the only issue in Lesotho. This is known as the Blue River for obvious reasons, except that it isn't a river at all. This is the waste product from that Chinese clothing factory, the Nian Hsing International, that makes jeans for Walmart, amongst others. They have promised that they would fix the holes in this wall and that this river would dry up. That was the promise made in 2003. If any child is unfortunate enough to fall into this water, they suffer from skin rashes and stomach upsets and often need to go to hospital. They keep saying that this is harmless, but if that's the case, why do the factory workers wear masks and protective clothing? The emissions are so hot that sometimes this river is steaming. One farmer even thought he would try and irrigate his plants from this river. They all turned blue and died. Lesotho has environmental laws in place. Why aren't they being adhered to? Nobody's denying that progress is essential, but in the rush to achieve corporate success, individuals and even entire communities are seeing their legal rights trampled upon and ignored. This is a case where Protomos would be able to help the community ensure that the laws that affect their environment are properly observed. In another part of southern Africa, in the Kalahari Desert, live the San people, also known as the Bushmen. The San are the original people of southern Africa. Their history stretches back over many thousands of years, and recent research indicates that the San are the oldest genetic stock of contemporary humanity, the oldest stem of human life on the planet. However, since the arrival of the European colonists, the San have had a rough ride. At the turn of the last century, they were actually hunted for sport and regarded as vermin. At the time, there were 100,000 San in South Africa. Today, there are 5,000. Over the whole of Southern Africa, there are only 110,000 San remaining, facing cultural extinction, living lives of poverty on the outer edges of society. <coughs> Today, they struggle to win back a foothold, along with their pride, in the lands in which they once roamed freely. I've been working with the sand for about 10 years, uh, initially with land, land claims, after the Mandela government came into power. And after that, we started working with heritage issues, trying to help them claim back a lot of their heritage, which is their, their rock art and all other aspects of their knowledge. This is the hoodia plant. It grows all over the sand lands, but this particular variety is very special. The sand used it when hunting or traveling long distances through the desert. It has a natural property which acts as a powerful appetite suppressant. When the knowledge possessed by the sand became known, institutions and corporations fell on the plant for commercial exploitation. It is now a billion dollar global industry. Under the Convention for Biological Diversity, 
acknowledged international law that the traditional knowledge source of, of a genetic product should be compensated for financially. Hoodia grown elsewhere is really effectively a loss not only for South Africa but particularly for the San whose knowledge it was that made the entire world market explode. The fact that it was used for an appetite suppressant was a San knowledge. I believe the knowledge was stolen from my people, so for me, if we get a little advantage out of it, that will be a good thing. And it will also be a good thing if the fat people could get an advantage by losing weight. I am a Bushman. I am a true blood Bushman. My ma was a Bushman. My pa was a Bushman. The hoodia was big food for the Bushman. They didn't take it home. It was used out in the field hunting as food and water. And that's what they say. It was also medicine. It cleans the blood and keeps you healthy. We don't usually tell people what other things it's used for as they might steal our ideas like they have and make powder and stuff. A Hoodia Trust was formed to claim the rights which already have been um, lost overseas, the rights to the Hoodia plant. If you look at the, the value of the international Hoodia market at the moment, it runs into billions of dollars. Well, the Trust has received $60,000 so far, which is a pittance. And unless we can actually sort out the international regime legally, we will continue to be owed it millions of dollars and we won't receive it. When the leaders got together, made this very important decision, which sets them apart, I think, from, from most other nations internationally. They said that any money we receive from our heritage is a common heritage and all of the San brothers and sisters internationally must receive equally. So there's been no fight over the spoils. The principle is very deep that we are going to share everything as fairly as we can. The San Institute needs help in order to further the rights of the San internationally. Um, and Protomos has got legal uh, capacity to do that. We have met Protomos and we feel that partnership is absolutely essential for us to further the Hoodia case. This has been the first opportunity that the San have to actually assist themselves. The money that can flow from the Hoodia can be a form of justice which can finally reach them. Corruption and exploitation in government and business is often hidden and yet has massive impacts on people's lives. By making the law accessible, we provide these people with a resource that for centuries people in the developed world have regarded as an unquestionable right. Yeah.